Welcome to EM Rapid 2024. Today we are going to discuss the topics of preeclampsia and eclampsia. So, initially we will uh, go ahead with some of the definitions. So, what do you mean by chronic hypertension in pregnancy? So, chronic hypertension in pregnancy is the hypertension which develops be before the pregnancy that is uh, before the 20th week weeks of gestation and persists and or persists longer than 12 weeks after delivery so the bp will be greater than or equal to 140 mm hg of systolic and the diastolic bp will be greater than or equal to 90 mm hg and what do you mean by severe chronic hypertension severe chronic hypertension in pregnancy is, uh, is defined as the bp systolic bp of greater than 160 mm hg with diastolic bp greater than 110 mm hg and the next one we have to discuss is gestational hypertension gestational hypertension is the hypertension that occur after 20 weeks of pregnancy or in immediate postpartum dates without the uh, for fighting of proteinuria so the some of the complications that are associated with the uh, hypertension in pregnancy are like placental abruption abruptio placenta preeclampsia then low birth weight babies premature birth uh, cesarean delivery and high chance of fetal death fetal demise can also be there So, we will go ahead with the treatment schedule for the hypertension in pregnancy. Most commonly, we are using uh, labetalol and methyl dopa. So, as such, the only thing we have to look forward is that uh, ACE inhibitors and ARBs are a high chance of uh, teratogenicity is there. So, we are avoiding the both two drugs in pregnancy. So, uh, all antihypertensives usually cross placenta. Labetalol is the first line choice for chronic hypertension pregnancy. So, the starting dose for labetalol is 100 mg per oral twice or BD. And maintenance is we increase the dose up to 200 to 400 mg BD. Then the next one, next drug we have to find is methyl dopa. Methyl dopa is given as 250 mg Q6 at 6 hourly and which can be titrated up to 500 to 3 gram divided into 2 to 4 do doses per day maximum will be 3, three gram so we can also use long acting nifedispin as an additional drug if we are not able to control the bp with methyl dopa or labetalol so uh, the long acting nifedispin can be given as 30 milligram per oral once a day or else uh, we can also uh, try with other drugs also So, for acute management of hypertensive emergencies, uh, we can also uh, use uh, other drug like hydrazine that is 5 milligram IV or 10 m, uh, to, uh, IV or IM or else labetalol 20 mg IV or nifedipin 20 to 30 mg per oral can be used during pregnancy. And about angiotensin converting uh, uh, enzymes and the uh, angi angiotensin receptor blockers as already told these two are contraindicated because of the teratogenicity that is uh, can cause uh, deformities in the sc fetal scalp and lung and kidney can also be affected next one is regarding preeclampsia and eclampsia so what do you mean by preeclampsia preeclampsia is the condition where the patient is having gestational hypertension with proteinuria so uh, patient, uh, the patient will be having a hypertension that is after 20 weeks of uh, gestation with a new onset of proteinuria so the uh, proteinuria uh, can be sudden uh, there will be sudden in, uh, or else we can also have help syndrome also so usually this occur after 20 weeks of gestation and uh, uh, coming to the eclampsia part the eclampsia is uh, the addition of seizures over the preeclampsia that's that is the patient will be having new onset of seizure pre uh, superimposed over preeclampsia that is usually seen after 20 weeks of gestation or up to four weeks of postpartum 
and that already discuss new onset hypertension that is BP 140 over 90 with either proteinuria or other features of end organ damage that is the, the patient can have uh, lung injury that is pulmonary edema or else acute kidney injury or liver dysfunction elevated ASST OTPTs and right quadrant pain and also patient can have severe headache uh, and blaring of vision this can be attributed to the papillary edema so we should have a uh, optal uh, consultation and also fundus examination should be mandatory and hematological com complications like uh, thrombocytopenia usually the platelet counts will be less than 150000 and sometimes the patient can have altered sensory neurological co uh, uh, complications also like stroke seizure also can be there so coming to the risk factors for preeclampsia the this either this may be the first pregnancy or multiple pregnancies or the patient can be obese or elderly gravida greater than 38 5 years of age and the history of diabetes ckd and hypertension and coming to the blood investigations that we should do we should send for a cbc which will show hemoconcentration and thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia less than 150000 and uh, we also have to send for the RFT. Creatinine values will be elevated, sensitivity of the disease, and in LFT, SGOT, and SGPT will be elevated. And LDH will be also elevated, sensitivity of the hemolysis, microangiopathy hemolysis. And we can also see protein in urine, that is proteinuria, and elevated protein creatinine ratio greater than 0.3 is sensitivity of the same. And also, uric acid level greater than 5.5 is sensitivity of preeclampsia superimposed over the chronic hypertension coming to the pathology the pathology of the um, preeclampsia is not so well understood as as we are uh, uh, on examination we could find what was that there will be atherosis and thrombosis in the decidual arteries which causes free radical formation and also oxidative stress and inflammatory response that that may be the cause for the preeclampsia and next thing is help syndrome help syndrome means hemolysis elevated liver enzymes low platelet counts that's a, that is the HELLP uh, stands for so help syndrome is a clinical variant of the preeclampsia and uh, mo mostly seen in multigravid patients and Help syndrome patients uh, can or can may or may not have the hypertension part and our patient will come with epigastric pain. So we should always check for help syndrome in uh, gravid uh, patients greater than 20 weeks of gestation and uh, up to the postpartum one, one week. And the test that we had to do for help syndrome include the CBC wherein which we can uh, see the uh, uh, low platelet counts and also peripheral smear where we will have schistocytes the platelet count is less than 150000 is 150000 is suspicious uh, suspicious of the help syndrome whereas less than 1 1 lakh is suspicious of the same then uh, elevated liver and seems less than uh, 500 is usually seen and also in rft we can see elevated creatinine also and coagulation profile will be abnormal uh, with elevated ld suspicious of the hemolytic anemia and total bilirubin will be also elevated Next, coming to the treatment part. So, the treatment for mild eclampsia, outpatient treatment can be done with uh, antihypertensive. Uh, and uh, for the severe preeclampsia, that is the BP greater than systolic BP greater than 160 mmHg, we have to give IV antihypertensives, uh, IV and oral antihypertensives along with IV magnesium sulfate. We will discuss magnesium sulfate uh, later on and also. Uh, for the uh, definitive solution and definitive treatment for preeclampsia, it will be the delivery of the fetus. The next is eclampsia. Eclampsia, as was al already discussed, that is the uh, onset of C shades along with the super uh, imposed preeclampsia plus C shades. So, eclampsia should be suspected in any patient that is uh, more than 20 weeks of gestation or less than 4 weeks postpartum and these patients can develop seizures, coma, encephalopathy 
uh, cl eclampsia patients may or may not have hypertension but some, some patients can have normal BP also. And management of uh, hyper, uh, the eclampsia, we have to manage hypertension and also we have to manage the seizure and also we have to uh, get the obstetric consultation for as urgent delivery of the baby. So, if the seizure is a witness seizure or if you are uh, having a patient in our ED, pregnant patient with seizures, we have to manage the seizure initially. So, we have to maintain the airway and we have to uh, prevent aspiration and we have to keep the patient in left uh, left side and also we have to uh, pre prevent the uh, prevention of mater maternal hypoxia should be there we have to give O2 support and then we have to uh, treatment for the uh, hypertension should be done that that is we have to give anti hypertensive and treatment for seizure also should be done so uh, also we should uh, involve the gynecology team for the uh, fast delivery of the child and also uh, for the seizure part we have to uh, we, we are giving magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate we are giving as 4 to 6 gram 50 per, uh, 10 percent 4 to 6 gram of uh, magnesium sulfate given in 100 ml over 20 minutes and this will be followed by 2 gram infusion over the 24 hours this uh, this or we can give im uh, also that is called the pritchard regimen pritchard regimen will give 10 gram of magnesium sulfate that is 5 gram on each buttocks that is 50 percentage of uh, magnesium sulfate 5 gram on each buttocks followed by 5 gram every 4 hour for the next 24 hours and the magnesium sulfate is renally ex excreted and the patient can have uh, magnesium toxicity also if uh, we are giving lot of magnesium sulfate that is uh, renal insufficient patients can have magnesium toxicity so we have to reduce the dose to 2 gram IV bolus uh, and obtain a serum magnesium level before uh, increasing the dose for the same. So the side effects of magnesium uh, includes flushing, diaphoresis, hypothermia, then flaccid paralysis, respiratory depression, hypotension. So we have to check for the uh, patellar uh, reflexes and knee jerk and also respiratory rate to uh, look for the uh, magnesium toxicity. And also we have to other treatment of preeclampsia includes replacement of coagulation factors of uh, factors and obtain uh, for the delivery of the baby we have to get the uh, obstetric consultation and uh, if uh, we are uh, having uh, if we are doing work in a center we, where we don't have the gynecological support we have to stabilize the patient and we have to uh, transfer the patient to a higher tertiary center where we can have uh, obstetric care so the about the drugs that we are using for preeclampsia and eclampsia mainly we are using labetalol then uh, hydralazine uh, midelopa and nifedipine about labetalol labetalol is the most common uh, drug used in emergencies because of its fast action it's a, and also about because of its action that is a selective alpha and non selective beta antagonist so the dosage is 20 mg iv then we have to we can increase the dose like to 40 to 80 milligram every 10 minutes maximum up to 300 milligram and uh, for you can have an infusion of the labetalol at 1 to 2 milligram per minute uh, the the advantages are it has a less hypotension and reflux tachycardia than hydralazine and uh, about hydralazine hydralazine is an arterial vasodilator and onset of action is 20 minutes and 5 to uh, 5 mg <coughs> IV or 10 mg IM can be given for uh, as hydralazine and uh, repeat uh, can be done every 20 minutes uh, maximum up to 20 IV and 30 IM the main uh, problems about the hydralazine are maternal hypotension and fetal distress and next about the nifedipine nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker with the action onset of 10 to 20 minutes and 10 mg per oral can be given and can repeat the dose every 30 minutes in uh, these are the main drugs that we are using for uh, preeclampsia and eclampsia that's about the em rapid session about preeclampsia and eclampsia thank you